Hello everyone. It is that time again. Time for our bi-weekly live chat. Um, I hope you guys have been well over the past two weeks. I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. And Memorial Day is the unofficial start of summer. So today's chat, we are going to talk about how to have a minimalist summer. Summer is my favorite time of the year. Um, there's so much you can do or you can do absolutely nothing. The weather is beautiful. It's just easy to um, be happy and have all those great experiences that we tend to want to focus on as minimalists. So as I'm talking, please feel free to leave any questions that you may have or comments about um, how to have a minimalist summer. I'm gonna be talking about some things that you can do during the summer and traveling and things of that nature. Um, so if you have any questions about summertime activities and minimalism, please leave them as I'm talking. So, summer is here. A lot's going on. It's a, there's a lot of activities and things. Um, you can go either way with summer. You can either get involved in a lot of the activities that are going on, especially outdoors, or you know, you can do absolutely nothing. People generally tend to take their vacation time during the summer, and vacation may mean rest for some people. For other people, it means getting active. For me, particularly, um, because I don't like the cold weather, um, the summertime for me is when I get very active. So I will be traveling a lot this summer and also spending a lot of time with friends and family and enjoying the beautiful weather. So what are the, some of the types of activities that you can get into? And I'll start with free activities because um, as minimalists, you know, if you're especially on a budget, um, the summertime is a great time to get involved in a lot of activities that are free or low cost because they are held outdoors. So you have your regular parks, your state parks, lots of festivals, some are free, um, some are not. You have a lot of local festivals going on in your region or your state. There's also a lot of music festivals and things going on around the country and around the globe during this time. So depending on what your budget is, there's something that everyone can do. Um, also, traveling, if you are, if increasing your experiences is one of the things that you want to focus on as being a, a minimalist, the summertime is a great time to do that and to travel. I like to budget throughout the year so that I can do a lot more travel um, during the summer. And if you plan correctly, even traveling it doesn't have to be very expensive. Um, I follow the rules where booking flights, I try to do it at least 30 days in advance for domestic flights and 90 days in advance for um, international flights. And I use like um, Skyscanner and Hopper and other apps to help me track flight prices, flight prices. Um, and when I travel um, nationally and internationally, I have used Airbnb in the past and I will be using it this summer for my accommodations. That also helps cut down on travel expenses. Also, packing light will help you cut down on travel expenses because I know a lot of, well, not a lot, but some um, airlines are starting to charge even for check bags and Spirit Airlines actually charges for um, 
carry-ons. So whatever you're doing this summer, it's good to have a plan and put together a budget. And even if you aren't planning to travel or go to a lot of event, go to a lot of events, summer is also like a great time to declutter. I sort of look at summer because I work in a school system. Um, I look at summer as sort of the end of the year versus December. Um, so summer is definitely a great time to like go through everything you've accumulated from the fall and um, get rid of stuff, have garage sales and yard sales because again, there's nice weather, you can go outside. This is summertime is prime yard sailing season. It could also help you not only get rid of stuff, but make some money um, to pay off debt or to have experiences, have more experiences or travel during the summer. Um, another thing that summer allows us to do is spend more time with people. Because the weather is nice, we just tend to be more social. Sorry, I'm messing in my hair, but it's kind of hot. Um, so we tend to be more social and summer's a great time to really spend time with the people that we care about. And it doesn't have to be anything expensive. People have potlucks and barbecues, um, you know, or going out to bars, day drinking. People love to drink outside. I don't know why, but it just feels so good to have like a glass of wine or a beer or something while you're sitting outside on a patio or something at a bar or even at your home. Um, so yeah, summer's a great time to just hang out with people. It's a great time for road trips if you wanna visit people who, ne who don't necessarily live in your state. Um, the weather just makes being social very fun. What else? Um, Kenya says she's hosting a brunch in a couple of weeks at her place and she's so excited. Yep, wish I could be there. I'll wait for my invite. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to say about things you can do during the summer. So I'm ready and waiting for any questions that you may have or comments about what to do during the summer and how to have a minimalist summer. I think the best way to have a minimal, minimalist summer is just to take advantage of um, all the experiences that you can have given the weather. Yes, team brunch coming up. We can do it during our virtual meeting, <laughs> our virtual non-business meeting. I'll bring the wine. So what else? What questions do you guys have about summer? Mm, this this uh, chat is going to be over with soon if we don't get some more people up on here. My usuals aren't here yet. Kenya and Anika, what questions do you have? Oh, Kenya asks, what is your favorite summer hairstyle? Um, I'm currently trying out wash and goes, trying to perfect it. Look, I've been natural for 12 years now. And with the thickness and density and coarseness of my hair, a wash and go is definitely something that I've struggled to achieve. But I'm currently trying out that Anthony Dickey method of wash and go, which actually is a lot less work than other methods because you do everything in the shower and then you just get out and shake and go. So a wash and go I know is a favorite um, hairstyle for us natural girls during the summer because it's easy and you can let your hair air dry. On the flip side of that, 
Another favorite hairstyle of us naturalistas and non-naturalistas, just black girls in general, we love getting braids and all types of, extent, of extensions um, during the summer. I know Anika just got her beautiful braids put in. I'm thinking about getting some yarn braids put in in the next couple of weeks before I start traveling. Um, but we'll see. If this wash and go experiment goes well, I might continue with it even while I'm traveling. But we'll see. I feel like um, my hair needs a break to rest up from winter and spring so I might go ahead and get the yarn braids put in but yeah both wash and goes and extensions or braids are very minimalist styles um, that don't require a lot of work while you're out and about enjoying yourself this summer For guys, on the other hand, I think during the summertime, and I'm speaking specifically about black men, um, I feel like their beauty, whatever, routine, maintenance routine becomes more serious because you're out and about more, so you always want to have your fresh cut, fresh lineup, you know, have your facial hair maintained. So for guys, I feel like the summertime gets a little bit more serious when it comes to your hair and stuff. Because you always want to be looking fresh all the time. What else? Mm Do, 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 do. Kenya, you got another question? Or who, who's on? I can't tell. So... If you guys are interested in um, hiking, yeah, hiking and like trails and things, Outdoor Afro is actually an organization that I just learned about. They are going to be featured in our next themed blacklist. Um, it's a national network all over the country where Black nature enthusiasts basically get together and go to their state parks and things and um, walk and hike on the trails and do outdoor sports, um, you know, in nature. So if you're interested in, you know, getting up close and personal with nature, hiking, trails, all the things associated with that, um, definitely check out... Um, Outdoor Afro. Another organization to check out if you want to get active, especially now that the weather is nice, is Girl Track. I believe they do do events all year round, and Outdoor Afro probably does as well. Um, but I know people are sort of reluctant to get out when the weather is not great. But Girl Track, they def also is a national organization, and they have local networks in all the major cities and regions. Um, that's another organization to get involved in, to be active. And these are also great organizations just to meet new people. Um, uh, Anika said, camping and hiking is definitely a budget-friendly outdoor activity. Yep, definitely camping. I've never been 
camping is definitely something I want to do. Um, I know Nico went camping over the holiday break and she enjoyed it. But yeah, definitely take advantage of nature and the outdoors, especially if you have, you know, if you live in an area where you get winter and fall, definitely take advantage of the summer months to enjoy nature. Uh-oh, Franco, a.k.a. Clarence, a.k.a. Frank Nitty, is in the building. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, Outdoor Afro, Girl Track, um, Black Girls Run. I just, I knew about Girl Track, but I'm just learning about some of these organizations that I'm mentioning here. And like I said, they will be in our roundup as soon as we get that release. Um, but yeah, get outdoors. Even if you're just sitting on your um, porch or your patio, balcony, whatever. Um, I was sitting out on... My balcony this weekend also did some container gardening on the balcony this weekend and got some sun starting up my tan for the summer. That's another activity. If you love to garden, growing vegetables, flowers, um, now is the time to do it. Get your hands dirty, learn about nature, show an appreciation for nature during this time. Clarence says he's into hiking, fresh from his workout. Clarence um, runs a workout group, Fit Team Delaware. Please collect, co correct me if I'm wrong about the name in um, the comments, Franco. They also meet outside too, right? at like tracks and schools, places like that. So if you're in Delaware, I think they're specifically in the Wilmington, Newark area. Um, definitely check out Fit Team Delaware to meet people and get in shape. Okay, Fit Team Delaware, I was right. Yes, we did, I, taught, I mentioned briefly um, going to festivals, having barbecues, potlucks, day drinking. I did mention those briefly at the beginning. Depending on your budget, you know, you can do any of these things. The great thing about the summertime is that there's something to do for everyone's budget. So if you can't afford to go to the bar or can't afford to go to the pay to get into some of the festivals, you can have a barbecue right in your backyard or on your patio or balcony or whatever. Invite your friends over. Have them bring something. Um, and that's an inexpensive way to still enjoy the summer and spend time with people you care about. Clarence says they will, Fit Team Delaware, will be planning hiking trips during this season also. Cool. Where will you be hiking at? Do you know? Of course, if you live on one of the coasts, um, you have access to beaches. That's also inexpensive. I mean, depending on how far the beach is from you and if you plan on um, staying overnight or just going down for a day trip, you can definitely go visit the beaches if you don't live near a beach or not even that, but there's also lakes. But I'm thinking about people particularly in the Midwest, the middle of... The U.S. who don't have access to beaches, they are likely to be in um, around lakes. 
Um, another inexpensive thing to do is to go to your community pools or get yourself a YMCA membership. Um, they tend to be um, generally affordable. Clarence said they'll be hiking in different spots, PA, Delaware, and Maryland. Let me know where you end up in Maryland, or even Delaware, probably. I act like Delaware is so far away. It's not. North Delaware, I should say. <laughs> um, yeah, I might have to catch up with y'all. Outdoor movies. That's another good one I didn't think about. Um, a lot of towns and cities have... Um, free outdoor movies where you can come bring your um, blankets you can bring your own food and stuff and just chill out and watch a movie um, yeah and there are like plenty of like free summer festivals also Anika she lives in New York she says there's lots of um Great music festivals, great free music festivals in New York. Also, of course, New York has a ton to do regardless. Um, block parties, those things tend to happen during this time. It's so much that goes on. Like, I just love, I love summertime. Lonnie, hey, she is in Virginia. She says there's lots in D.C. and Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia, if you live in like the Mid Atlantic region of the East Coast, you know D.C. is popping during the summertime. A lot of people come to D.C. because it's the capital, and you can go to all the Smithsonian museums. The majority of them are free. There's also plenty of other museums around the city that aren't a part of the Smithsonian, but still great, that may be um, free or low charge. Clarence said, talking to Anika, he was at the BAMS festival. Uh, what was it, Memorial Day weekend? I've been to the BAMS festival one time, but that was like, eesh, 10 years ago. But it's a great festival. Also, if you are in the Philly area, the Odun Day Festival is this weekend, the 9th and 10th, or is it just on the 10th? Is it just on the Sunday? I can't remember if it's all weekend or just on Sunday, but the Odun, Do, Odun Day Festival is coming up this weekend in Philly. Philly also has, what is, is it the Made in America concert? They have some big free concert that's like on the steps of the art museum in that area of Philly. I forget what the name of it is. I think, is it Made in America? Mm, but they have some free big concert in Philly where all they get all the famous um, stars that come out. It may be around, is it 4th of July that they have that big thing in Philly? Yes, it is Made in America. And oh yes, a Dune Day is two days. So Saturday and Sunday is coming up. This weekend, and a friend of mine, Brother Onachi, um, he will be DJing at Odun Day. He is part of the Sonic Diaspora Musical Collective. The Roots Picnic. Oh, it's already had? They already had that? Yeah. The East Coast has a lot going on. I mean, I'm sure the West Coast does too, but I just don't know about the West Coast. But, you know, you can go up and down the coast. There's plenty going on on the East Coast. And, you know, having a major interstate, I-95, just makes it easier to get to all the major cities on the coast. So, yeah, the Roots Festival, the Roots Picnic um, was last weekend. This weekend I just passed. And they have a lot of great artists that come to that also. What else? Essence Fest. That happens. Now that's gone. You got to plan. If you don't live in New Orleans, that's a, definitely something you got to plan for and budget for because um, I think they have some free 
events during the Essence Fest, but some you may have to pay for. Actually, I'm not really sure. I've never been, but it's something that I've always wanted to go to, and it looks really cool. But you definitely, if you don't live in the area, then you definitely have to plan and budget for that. Um, Clarence mentioned the Philadelphia Caribbean Carnival. Oh, I never even knew Phil, uh, Philly had their own Caribbean Carnival. DC also has their Caribbean Parade, but I forget what day it's on. I forget when it is. Or, yeah, they have a parade. Well, something happened with that, and I think they might have moved it to Baltimore, or they're doing it in collaboration with the Be More Caribbean group. I don't know. I'll have to check on that one for you guys. Yep, Dover has Fire Firefly Music Festival. That's held on the grounds of the... Um, Dover Downs Casino and Hotel. Those of us who live in this region, because Dover is like 45 minutes from, from that. If you're not going to the festival, we don't go to Dover during that weekend. We also go, don't go to Dover during NASCAR weekends, which is usually at the beginning of the summer and at the end of the summer. I've seen that. So Franco also mentioned that DC is um, having a jollof. Did I say that right? Jollof rice festival. So is it between like the countries like Nigerian, Nigeria and Ghana? I think this is a new festival, the jollof festival. But I have been seeing it pop up on um, Facebook. I've also never had jollof rice. At least I don't think I have. Oh, many countries. All right. Is it primarily Western African countries? Or do they make jollof in the Caribbean also? I need to get up on my jollof history, I guess. Okay. Western Africa, West Africa. What else? Any other questions about, you know, how to keep it minimalist during the summer? The summer is actually a time where, like, I want to say I don't promote being a maximalist, but I definitely promote getting out there and doing everything that you want to do during the summer. Caribbean countries make pilaf. Never, I don't know if I, I feel like I'm behind on my African diasporic culinary knowledge. Because I don't know, I'm sure I probably had pilaf, maybe. Am I pronouncing that correctly, too? I never bought some rice and peas, you know, jerk, curry, Plantains, but I don't know if I've ever had pilaf. Something for me to brush up on during my summer. Um, so what are your plans? People that are watching, tell me what are you planning to do this summer? I am going to... I'm going to the West Coast. Um, I'll be around like locally, like, you know, DC, Philly, Virginia areas, but I'll also be going to the West Coast. I'll be going to Seattle. I've never been to the West Coast before, so I'm really excited. I'll be going to Seattle at the end of June um, and Sacramento right after Seattle. And then from Seattle, I'm going, I mean, then from Sacramento, I'm going to Mexico for a couple of weeks and then I'll be back here and probably going to Philly a few times. So Clarence shared, he said, I'm totally realizing that I'm going to do a lot of summer stuff solo because waiting on people is weak. True, true that. 
Um, so his friends are being minimalized. <laughs> That's true, but I feel like even though, yeah, you don't want to wait on people. Like, just in general, in life, do not be waiting on and depending on other people to live your life. Go out there, experience the things you want to do, have fun. Do not wait on other people or let other people dictate your life, number one. Number two, because it's summertime and so many people are out, even if you go out solo, I'm sure you're bound to like either run into somebody you know or make new friends because everybody is happy and social, I feel like, during the summertime. Add in some wine, liquor, other alcoholic beverages, and people become very friendly. So, yeah, don't even worry about um, trying to get people together to go someplace. Just go do it. Go do it and have fun. Anika said she goes out solo all the time, um, especially to eat out to restaurants. Definitely. Yep, D.C. is a haven. <laughs> Lots of folks. And I feel like for me, D.C. is like one of those places where even people that I've met in other areas, like even when I was in, when I lived in Illinois for two years, like people that I met there even end up moving to D.C. or, or are in D.C. a lot. So like people from all over where I met in different parts of the country always seem to find their way to D.C. So definitely in D.C., if you're def especially if you're from this region, but you can always run into somebody you know or you met along the way in D.C. Um, Clarence also mentioned trap karaoke in Philly on June 17th. I've never been to trap karaoke, but I'm definitely interested. Definitely interested in that. Um, Truckaroo is in D.C. on June 30th. Clarence got the whole social schedule. If y'all want to know what's going on between um, New York, Philly, Wilmington, and D.C., hit up Franco because he knows it all. <laughs> Correction, <laughs> Trap Karaoke is on June 24th, not 17. He said there's also a D.C. Wine and Beer Fest on July 1st. He's got the, he's, he knows it. He's got all the events. Expect him to be there. Say hi. He's, I don't know, over six feet. Can't miss him. Lynn. Hey, Lynn. What's going on in DC? Lynn lives in DC. Lynn is Lonnie's sister. <laughs> six four. Not only is he over 6'4", but he's just, he has a bubbly, I don't even know if bubbly is the right word. I don't know how to describe his personality. It, it matches his height, we'll put, that, put it that way. He has a 6'4 personality, and he is 6'4", so you can't really miss him. Say hi if you see him. <laughs> um so yeah it's just there's a lot going on there's no excuse to be bored and like I said even if you're not even if you're not like a, a social person there's still plenty of you plenty for you to do at home like I said you can declutter your whole home this is a great time to do that and have yard sales make some extra money No one should be bored this summer. So nobody answered this question. What are your plans for this summer? Specifically. Linganore Wine Fest. I think they had one. They had the Caribbean Fest over um, Memorial Day weekend. And they have a reggae fest in... Um, July, I believe. So the Caribbean Fest plays like all music from, from the region, but the Reggae Fest is specifically, they have a reggae band and DJ.
that's in Mount Airy, Maryland, way out in the sticks of Maryland, but it's worth the drive. So what are you guys doing this summer? Anika says she doesn't have much planned, but she usually does the beach, picnics, and house parties. Yes, house parties. What do you go, what beaches do you go to? Do you go to beaches like in New York? I'm not familiar up there. Like, don't they have, like, mm, I don't know. Franco says he plans on hitting the beach at least for a day trip. Yep. So, if you live on the eastern shore of Maryland, well, Delmarva, which is Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, the eastern part of it, the DMV is the western Delaware, Virginia, Maryland. Delmarva is the eastern portion where all the beaches are. Um, Delaware's beaches are actually state parks, most of them, I think, except for Rehoboth. So if you are coming from out of state, you may have to pay to get in, but their beaches are, like, very clean. Um, the Delaware state government takes really good care of their beaches, and I think they've been rated, like, some of the most beautiful beaches, like, in the country because of how well they take care of their beaches. Um, I definitely prefer Delaware beaches over the Maryland beaches, like Ocean City. Um, I think, in my opinion, the Delaware beaches are much cleaner and also less crowded. Clarence says there aren't really beaches in New York City. Anika said Jones Beach is pretty popular. Yeah, I'm, I have no idea about beaches in New York. So if you don't go to beaches in New York, you generally go down to like Jersey or go up north to like what? Maine or Connecticut, something. Also Virginia Beach, that's another popular beach that's on this part of the region. Clarence says Rehoboth, Dewey, and Bethany are free. Are they free, though? Well, not Rehoboth, but it depends on if you have a state tag or not. State tag or not, right? For some of them. For some of them. Not all Delaware beaches charge, but some of them you have to have. If you have a, if you're out of state, you have to pay to get in. If it has, like, hiking and camping and all that stuff, associated with the beach. Jersey Shore, Clarence mentions, is definitely prime beach location. Never been to the Jersey Shore. Our Jersey, is the Jersey Shore clean? I just always feel like it's an impression that I have. I don't know how accurate it is, but I feel like <laughs> Jersey is just dirty in general. My bad, anybody that's from Jersey, but yeah, that must be what I'm thinking about. Anika said Jones Beach is out in Long Island. <laughs> Franco said the Jersey Shore is clean and popular. Good to know. North Jersey is dirty. <laughs> Correction. North Jersey is the dirty part. South Jersey, Jersey Shore is clean. Also in Maryland, they have... Is it Deep Creek? Um, a lot of people go there during the wintertime for, like, snowboarding and stuff. And, you know, using the cabins. But I believe they also have lakes around there in Deep Creek also that people go to during the summertime. You can rent, like, homes there, houses. And Deep Creek is in 
Western Maryland, Northwestern Maryland. Of course, there's also all of the amusement parks, um, Great Adventures, the one that's in outside of DC, I forget the name of that one. It's another Six Flags. I forget the name of it though. Um, Dorney Park, Hershey Park, Kings of Minion, um, Bush Gardens. Those are all in this area. Amusement parks, depending on you know what you're doing, they can be kind of expensive both for admission and paying for food and things once you get inside the park. But definitely amusement parks are something fun to check out. I I really don't have a desire to go to amusement parks anymore. I used to love them when I was young. But I feel like now that I'm older, like the adult in me is just like, why are you getting on this crazy roller coaster that goes upside down, inside out, within an inch of your life? Yeah, I'm not... The adult in me just is not feeling amusement parks anymore. Also, too many people, too many children, unless you're pre playing for like a premium pass where you don't have to wait in line or you're going when they have like special events where the park is not open to everyone, you know, I generally just, I don't have a desire to go to amusement parks in my older years. Oh, another good thing. Now, Rehoboth Beach, he says, is also known for outlet, outlet shopping. I would say I'm going to recommend against shopping as minimalists unless it's something you absolutely want or need. And if you are going to go shopping, make sure you set a budget. Don't blow your budget at the outlets because it's very easy to do that. Rehoboth is also a gay-friendly beach. That's also important, too. I, we're mentioning a lot of places, but it's also good to know places that are um, welcome and safe for everyone. So, yeah, Rehoboth is one of the most popular um, gay-friendly beaches in this region. But yeah, safe spaces for everyone is important, especially during the summer, because with alcohol, people also get friendly, but they also get rowdy. Um, so when you're out and about, always be mindful of your surroundings. Make sure you're with people that you trust. And when people start to get out of control, remove yourself from those situations. And make sure wherever you're going at that you feel welcome there. Because everything ain't for everybody, and everybody don't want you in their spaces. I'll just put it that way. Clarence said, oh, yeah, my bad, minimalism. <laughs> yeah, with the shopping. I mean, everything is in my, within moderation. Like I said, if it's something that you really want or something that you happen to need, go for it. But I would say if you are going to go shopping, um, stay on budget. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But as minimalists, we like to focus on experiences, having great experiences, um, accumulating experiences over accumulating things. The Hamptons, never been there. Um, but that made me think about the movie Inkwell. Wasn't that supposed to be based on like the black area of the Hamptons or something? Mart no, not Martha's Vineyard. Or is that Martha's Vineyard? Is Martha Martha's Vineyard separate from the Hamptons? You can tell I'm not from I'm not from New York. Because <laughs> I'm conflating all these places. I don't even know if Martha's Vineyard is in New York. I think it's is that in Connecticut or something? Massachusetts. I don't know. But the Hamptons, that's another place where people like to go in the northern northeastern region. Also Vermont. That's like the number one nature state, I feel like, on the East Coast. And Vermont is also close to Canada. 
So if you got your passport, jump over the line and go see, you know, like Montreal and places that are near near there. Clarence also mentioned fishing. That's another great thing to do during the summertime. You can go catch your fish and then bring them back and throw them on the grill. That's very minimalist. If you already got your tackle and gear and stuff like that, you know, that's free. All, you, all it takes is your time. You go catch a meal, go catch your meal, and then enjoy it with your friends. But I think it's also just like a very, like, relaxing thing. At least for me, like, being near any body of water is so relaxing. Hey, Kenya. Kenya lives in Charleston. They have beautiful beaches along the South Carolina shore. Um, Charleston is like one of, Charleston and Savannah are like two of my favorite places in that region. And I love the beaches in that area. Yep, she said that we get tourists in Charleston, but that is in the South. Lots of fish, beaches, and historical sites. Yeah, it's definitely fun to do like road trips during the summer and go see places you places you maybe never seen before or revisit places you've already been to. There's so many um, historical places, especially on the East Coast and in the South, the South Southern regions um, that you can go to, drive to. Get out on the open road. I was going to say something else, but I forgot. Oh, Clarence said, if anybody goes to Canada, you must, I repeat, must drink their ice wine. I don't know. What is ice? Tell us about this ice wine, Franco. Family, family reunions, how can I forget about that? Summer is a big time for family reunions. Go to your family reunion, meet some people, meet some family you haven't met before, um, and just spend quality time with your people. Learn about your ancestry and genealogy. Um, family, family reunions are a great opportunity to do that. He says, if you're into sweet wine, it's a slice of heaven. I might have to find out about this ice wine. It's sold all over Canada or just in certain places? What else? I was going to say something I absolutely forgot. Let me scroll back up. Maybe it was something that sparked me in the comments. So is this sold in the U.S.? This ice wine you got me intrigued. Oh, I knew what I was going to say while I'm waiting for more information on the ice wine. Summer is a great time for self-care. For meditation, like meditation, you can go outside and do it early in the morning, listening to the birds chirp, watch the butterflies fly around. Um, you know, go to your nearest lake or river early in the morning and just sit out and be with yourself. I mean, you can do it on your patio, your balcony, but um, just going outside and sitting and being with yourself is a great thing to do during the summer. Yeah. Remember just to take time for yourself you know it's great to catch up with people and be social as we love to do 
during these months, but don't forget to um, take time for yourself, restore yourself in between these sessions, especially if you're an introvert like me. Um, you know, I love being social during the summertime, but I still need that time in between social activities to rest and be alone. Um, so don't forget about that. Yep, that's another thing for self-care. Take a walk. Go, you know, along your riverfront area, lake. Um, again, you can go back to a state park and walk a trail. Those are all very calming things um, to do. Gardening is also a very, like, it can be a meditative practice also. Anything that you do can be a meditation. Meditation is not just about sitting still and closing your eyes. Um, meditation takes many forms. You can do it writing, coloring, fishing, walking, gardening, um, you know, all of that constitutes a form of meditation if you choose it to be so. And if you, if need be, you know, we've talked about already like going to events by ourselves, but take a vacation by yourself, a vacation that's just for, you know, restoration. Listening to music is also another form of meditation. Um, but yeah, take a solo vacation. So I'll be traveling. Like I said, I'm traveling to Seattle and Sacramento, and I'm also going to Mexico, and I'll be in Mexico for two weeks. For the first week, um, my friend Lonnie is going to join me, and then for the second week, I'll be there by myself, and I'll be in Veracruz, which is on the eastern coast of Mexico, and I plan to spend that week just being by myself and getting my life together because these last few months have been super busy and I definitely spent, you know, plan on spending that time taking care of myself. So that's another thing to think about. You know, go do something for yourself this summer. Another event in Wilmington is the Clifford Brown Jazz Fest will be this month. Thank you, Clarence. Motorcycle riding. That's definitely popular. My sister is in a bike club. She rides her motorcycle all up and down the East Coast. There are lots of bike fests at beaches and other places. I know they just had the Black Bike Week. I think they had it. Um, Memorial Day weekend in um, Myrtle Beach. At least they used to have it. I went back when I was in college. I assume they still have Bike Week at Myrtle Beach. But all throughout the summer, there are lots of like bike fests, if you ride motorcycles or if you like looking at them. Also lots of car shows. Um, a lot. Clarence says, no matter where you live at, you probably haven't covered all the scenic areas. If you can, just get in a car and go. For real. Like, you don't even, you don't have to travel across the country, out of the country. I'm sure, like, take the time to be a tourist in your own town or city. Because, like he said, I'm sure there are some places that you have not seen. Um, I discover new places all the time, and also if you're in this region or if you're interested, the Harriet Tubman, um, un the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Visitor Center and National Park opened up in March. So if you're interested in her story, um, it's located outside of Cambridge, Maryland. Um, so if you're interested in Harriet Tubman and like to know more about her life, 
that visitor center is a great place to visit. Like I said, there's also a park associated with it and not too far away in the town, in the city of Cambridge, there's another Harriet Tubman Museum. There's also the Blackwater Wildlife Refuge that's right down the road from the museum. So it's definitely a lot you can do and learn if you're from this area or you're interested in Maryland history. Um, There's lots of outdoor and historical places to visit. Yep, Clarence says find a place in your state or district that you haven't been to, Google it, and plug it in your GPS. Yep, and he said Harriet Tubman the place where she lived at, she owned it. She owned the property and the, the house in upstate New York. One thing that I'm planning to do associated with Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad is there's a byway tour that goes from um, Cambridge all the way up to Philly. So, and it's places all along from Maryland to Philadelphia, includes Delaware, all places along the Underground Railroad and significant sites associated with the Underground Railroad and slavery. So I plan on doing that tour. It's a driving tour. You can download the audio and just go to each place. Some places are a museum. Some places are just stops, um, farms, different places like that. Um, so I plan on doing that this summer as well to see all of the places that our ancestors moved about to get to freedom. Not going all the way up to New York, but I think the tour, the one that I'm referring, the one that they have around here, it stops in Philadelphia. But yeah, I do know that she lived in um, upstate New York. And she also fought during the Civil War. What is it? Is it Combahee? Combahee. I don't know if it's in North Carolina or South Carolina. I think it's South Carolina. Where she fought and defeated the Confederates and also helped free several hundred slaves. That's in Southern South Carolina. I believe the Combahee raid was in South Carolina along the Combahee River. Um, so we're coming up almost on the hour. We have a few more minutes. Any last questions or comments about the summer before we wrap it up? Please make sure you scroll back through these comments, especially if you live in live along the East Coast because Clarence put like everything up in there. Lots of events. So if you're looking for something to do in this area, definitely scroll through the comments. But yeah, just to enjoy your summer, like, do whatever you want. Clarence has a question. And live light. By nature, during the summertime, warm months, we tend to shed all of our bulky clothing and blankets and all the stuff that we've accumulated throughout the winter months to keep us warm or to keep us cozy. Now is the time to shed all of those things 
and just be free and be light. Go out and enjoy the summertime. Um, Clarence has a question. Are you or anyone going to post things to do as you find them on the Facebook page or website? Um, we weren't planning on it, but we might be able to pull something together. I mean, we already have a great list going already, so we can definitely um, post things. And also, like, you guys can post stuff to our Facebook page. Like, it's not blocked to anyone. It's open to everyone. So if you come along, if you come across an event that you think, you know, people who follow this page might be interested in, feel free to post it on our timeline. We definitely welcome that. Don't be spamming us, but you can definitely post anything, um, post events and things that you think black minimalist folk will be interested in throughout the summer. But yeah, I can see if we can put together a list. Maybe we'll do like a, maybe we'll try to do a blog post um, by the end of June with all of the events and like festivals and conferences and things that are going on this summer. We'll do a weekly, a weekly event. Um, we'll do one like weekly summer season event roundup. So yeah, we'll post that. But in the meantime, until we get that post together, um, like I said, if you find anything that is interesting for people, um, definitely, you, de you can definitely post it to our page. So we will be back here again in two weeks. I believe that's the 19th. Um, we wanted to get the whole team on here this time, but we just didn't have the technological capabilities, but maybe I will get someone else on our team to host the next, um, chat, but yeah, we'll be back. I'm not sure what we're going to be talking about on the next chat, but if you have suggestions for something that you want to talk about, please leave them in the comment section and we'll see about it. Maybe we'll talk more about, um, summer beauty since we are going to do a themed list on that also so maybe we'll talk about summer beauty routines and regimens for both men and women um on the next chat maybe we'll see all right if there's no more questions i think we're done for tonight thank you all for joining me Thank you for all your questions and comments, and I will see you again in two weeks. Peace.